hitting quite a bit on our awesome lake and the quads program we're going to offer. Like Doc and Mike have mentioned, we're going to have some docks out there, so we're going to be able to offer swimming and boating and the Aquanaut badge for the Weibo Scouts. But the Cub Scouts, the Tiger, Wolves, and Bears will be able to do some swimming. We'll have open swim times posted when you guys come out to camp. The lake is kind of cold in the morning, typically, so we're going to try to keep that in consideration and best utilize the lake for your scouts. So when you come out to camp, we'll let you know when we're going to have some open swimming and open boating times. Adults can swim too and go out in the boats. If needed, they might be the ones who pass the swim check in order to go and take a boat out, and that's totally cool. So make sure everyone brings their swimming clothes. And any ladies coming out, please make sure it's a one-piece swimsuit. Guys, kind of long trunks. That information should be in your leader guide. Just follow the scouting guidelines for swimming. We are also going to be doing a lot with STEM and NOVA. Has anybody heard about STEM and NOVA yet? Anybody not? All right, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineer, and Math. It's a new program that National is rolling out. They really want to push these areas. And a lot of your schools that your scouts go to are trying to do more in these areas just to better teach the kids. And we're going to be doing a lot of those elements here at camp. For example, you go up to the BB <coughs> range or you do some archery, you're completing some of the STEM and NOVA requirements right there with how you use the lever in the BB gun or how you pull the bow back. So we're going to make sure we have some posters around the different areas saying, hey, just so you guys know as leaders, you're completing these requirements of the three different STEM awards we're offering at camp. There are four awards, but we're focusing on three of them just to make it easier and that those are the best programs we can offer at camp. Speaking into that, how many of you guys actually came out to camp last year? All right, a fair amount. So you remember we had a movie night and we would show a movie related to the space theme. This year, instead of offering a medieval type movie, we're actually going to be showing Mythbusters. Pretty cool, right? Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. And one of those episodes is specifically going to show the catapult system, which is going to knock out a whole bunch of STEM and NOVA requirements right there, making it really easy for you guys to help your scouts advance. So simple, a caveman can do it? Oh, I can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so like I said, we'll have those requirements posted around camp. At the end of camp, in your leader packet, you'll get a sheet de detailing that if your scout went here, he would have completed these requirements, because it will be up to you guys as the leaders to check off the requirements for the scouts. Now, going into the medieval theme, we're also going to be offering a lot of things relating to Knights of the Round Table. We're going to have jousting competitions. We're going to do night training, utilize the obstacle course that will be new and improved. We're going to try some jousting down the water slide, not just standing. There'll be a lot of foam noodles all around, things like that. And of course, there's going to be a lot of catapults. As Mike and I were talking the other day, instead of taking a t-shirt cannon, think a t-shirt catapult. You won't be able to turn without seeing the catapult, so hopefully you guys are getting pretty excited about that. Some of the returning programs, similar to what we have last year, we're going to have a nature program. Utilize the trail system, take hikes, teach about nature, go on dock to night hike, see some different things, different areas of camp. We're going to have a handicraft area where we're not only going to just do a night related craft, like making some armor and things like that, but we'll also do some service projects, including painting the Stars of Hope, um, possibly doing some tie blankets, and just some service projects that we're going to give to other groups to benefit them, making a lasting impression on other people. If this is mentioned in your program guide, this will qualify your scouts and yourselves for the Messengers of Peace, which is a national theme program encouraging scouts to better themselves and better forward. We're going to have a campfire. The first night will be presented by the staff, similar to last year. At the end of that one, we'll have a little ceremony of sorts presented by the tribe of Nani Bazoo that I spoke of earlier. And it's for the Weeblos too, but we encourage everyone to stick around and watch it. When you come out to camp, you'll be able to see more of it before I go into any more detail about that. And of course, after the campfire, we're going to go on Doc's infamous night hike, weather permitting, which will be a lot of fun. Go up to the top of the North Valley and check out some stars. It's a really amazing experience if you've never gone. 
And then on the second night, we encourage you guys as PACs to sign up and present a song or a skit or an activity or something like that. So come prepared, start thinking of what you guys want to do now, bring any props you might need. I'm sure we can scavenge up some cardboard if you guys ever need something to come out to camp. However, if you need any other kind of supplies, I encourage you to bring them out with you to camp. And as always, we'll have some s'mores going, different activities like that, food, fellowship, and fun. So both campfires will be a pretty exciting experience. Yes? Besides Aquanauts, what other pins will Legalos earn? They are actually listed in the program guide. Um, we're going to call them the Legal Quests. Okay. There will be a nature quest, which they'll do naturalist, forester, and geologist. And they'll get all three of those? Yes. And all those requirements that they complete will be the more hands-on activities. So it's not just, hey, read this or write a report. We're going to focus more on utilizing being outdoors, being at Little Sioux Scout Camp. And that's in here? Yes. The one with the tiger, wolf, and bear on the front. And there should be a whole page devoted to the Weeblo class. In the morning classes, we want the Weeblos, either one or two, to choose between the nature quest or the outdoorsman. And those are going to be pretty intense, so to speak. We're going to utilize the trail system again and teach as we go along the trail. And all those activities are going to be very hands-on. As with all the other requirements, at the end of the camp in your leader's packet, you'll get a breakdown of exactly what requirement your scouts should have completed when they went on the quest. And as you can see in the afternoon, it says choose one or both with the engineer and Aquanaut. We realize a lot of the Weeblos are probably going to want to take Aquanaut, so we're going to have to split that up in a couple classes in the afternoon when hopefully the lake water is warmer. So when you come out to camp after you register online, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, how to best go about signing up and when you get your schedule at camp, what session you're going to be in for those classes. So does that answer your question? No problem. And then on the Cub Scout side, it'll be more of a rotation through different areas. And that has a breakdown in front of the Weeblos in that program guide. Dave, would you, would you mind just giving me the quick safety talk that you and I have had a couple times? Just because I think one of the most important things in my world is that we are, you know, we've joked a little bit about paperwork and safety, et cetera. But the fact that we run extremely safe programs at Cub Resident Camp is something that you guys can help us be ambassadors back to those parents uh, who are maybe a little leery with the concept of you're going to put a gun in my first grader's hands. Well, okay, no, we are going to use this BB gun as a tool to teach them a number of very important things. And so I'd kind of like you to, to bring that up a little bit. There are been three basic rules of gun safety. It doesn't matter if it's a pistol, BB gun, archery, rifle, three basic concepts. Use your head. Keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. A safe direction generally means downrange if you're in a shooting sports range. If, it's, if, you're not, if you're out hunting, away from somebody. You don't point it at somebody. Secondly, you never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Third one is, you never load it until you're ready to shoot. That will be stressed repeatedly at the ranges. And if somebody kind of turns around and gets the gun away from downrange, you will be reminded that that's not nice. Like I said earlier, we don't run a piercing salon out here. No extra bolts. You don't go home with more than you came with. <laughs> bullets, arrows, rocks, sticks. No, we don't, no piercings. But those three rules will apply at any scout ranch, any shooting range you go to. You always keep it pointed in a safe direction. You never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. You never load it until you're ready to shoot. If you watch cop programs, CSI, Bones, Castle, all that, you'll see them. They got their finger up along the trigger until they're ready to shoot. And granted, they're in a situation where they have to be ready, and the gun is loaded. And downrange, it doesn't really count. But if you'll notice, their fingers are along the trigger. They're not down inside the trigger guard on the trigger. It's up alongside. And as a gun aficionado, I notice things like that. Also notice when they've got the automatic shot, bang, 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 bang. And I notice, oh, he can't shoot anymore. It's locked open. It's empty. And then he's shooting again, but you don't see him reload. Now, how do they do that? <laughs> anyway, those are the three basic rules of shooting sports. 
They apply to anything that has a projectile. Bullets, arrows, catapults. Marbles. No, that comes under slingshot. Yeah, I'm lost to you that way. At least I know all my brain cell phones. <laughs> but those are the basic rules of safety. If you can remember those, we'll get along famously. Thank you, David. And it's interesting because you hit on exactly what I was going to follow up with. And we will be observing those rules even when it comes to our catapult demonstrations. That it will be going through the process of knowing, are you prepared to shoot this catapult? Yes, OK, now you can put the tennis ball or the bean bag or whatever it is in there because we want to ensure that these rules are, are really being driven home. A couple of things that I'll highlight about our shooting sports ranges that Karen and I have been talking about. We are definitely going to be doing some dragon slaying at camp this year. And we're looking at a couple opportunities for dragon slaying. Now you're gonna to have to share this with all your Cub Scout buddies, by the way. You're like the first to hear this stuff. So I know a place where I can get We'll call it life-size dragons that are um, 3D archery targets. So we will have at least one dragon to sling arrows at. We're also going to be doing a combo project between the, the Knights Guild area and the BB gun range to give scouts options. Cub Scouts will have a chance to color and decorate a dragon of their choice at the Knights Guild after they're done making armor and way cooler stuff. And uh, then take it down to the BB gun range and see how many holes they can poke in it. <laughs> so uh, we'll be doing some things that, that just kind of add a little bit of that flavor into it. Uh, I think they sound kind of fun. So. Yogi Yogi Bear, Yogi Yogi Bear, I've got a friend named Yogi Bear, Yogi Yogi Bear.